Alright, how's everybody doing out there in Math Magic Land? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you. Today's lesson, we're going to solve some trig equations. That's right, we're only going to do three examples in this one. So, let's go ahead and take a look at them. But before we do, we're not only are we going to solve them algebraically, we're going to verify graphically our solutions using a value feature of the TI-84 graphing calculator. Now, this is a skill set that you should use a lot when you're working with these types of problems because not only will you get out some answers using your algebra, but when you verify things graphically, you're really starting to confirm that your solutions are indeed the ones that you came up with and you didn't make a mistake. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. Now, as we go through and take a look at this, one of the things I want you to pay attention to is this part right over here, 0 to 2 pi. So that means one full revolution of the unit circle. So this equation is going to have one or two or several solutions, but we're only going to go once, one revolution, for a circle. So solving this is going to be pretty straightforward. So if you subtract one on both sides, now normally I wouldn't show this because you guys are at a level where it's like, yeah, we could definitely kind of do that in our head, but you'd have negative cosine of theta equals one half minus one, and you end up with negative one half. But I have to get rid of this negative sign here in front of the cosine, so I would multiply or divide by negative one to come up with cosine having a value of one half. Now, so again, we're going to think about our unit circle here, and all students take calculus, and I'm writing that down to kind of help me with this piece right here. I want cosine to be positive, and I want it to be one half. So that tells me right off the bat, I'm going to be up here in quadrant number one, and down here in quadrant number four. Now, for those of you who have your unit circle stuff memorized, you know those two values. The first one is going to be pi over three, and the second one is going to be five pi's over three. So these are going to be the two values that I come up with using my algebra skills well, and unit circle skills too. But we're going to test these out. We're going to go ahead and verify those solutions graphically from our TI-84 graphing calculator. So, Alright, so now let's go ahead and we're going to verify this. So what I want you to do first is go ahead and hit your mood button because we want to make sure we're in radian mode. So make sure you get your calculator set in radian mode. Once you're good there, then what you're going to do is go to y equals and we're going to put in that 1 minus cosine of x. Now the 1 half, sometimes people would say put that in y2, but I'm actually going to leave that blank because we're going to take advantage of this value feature and I'm going to show you that momentarily. But since 1 half is just a number, I'm going to leave y2 blank. Now hit zoom, and then number seven. So there's a picture of one minus cos x. Isn't that nice? Two hills. But I don't want both of those, because check out my interval here. I'm only going from zero to two pi. If I hit my window button, notice I have negative six point blah 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 to six point blah blah blah. That's basically negative two pi to two pi, and I don't want that. So I'm going to go a little bit before zero. So I'm going to hit my second button, and the pi button is right here over over there by you know, this little carrot right there. So that's where your pi is. So pi divided by 2 or negative pi divided by 2. And notice how that changes that to a decimal. Now I'm going to go a little bit beyond 2 pi. So I'm just going to type in 6 point say 5. All right. Now when I graph this thing, it's going to be a little bit more of what I want to see. So I'm adjusting my viewing window. And I can definitely see I've got one hill there. Now what I'm going to do is use this value feature, and you're going to get to the value feature by going to this piece here on your calculator, right above the trace button. So what we're going to do is hit second and then trace, and the very first thing, of course, is value. How cool is that? Now I want to check out the value of pi over 3, so I just type in pi divided by 3, and I wait for it to give me an answer, and look over here, y equals 0.5, which is the same thing as what I want it to be. So that's good. But I had another value. So I gotta test that one too. So I'm gonna hit second and then calc again. And I wanna calculate this value of five pi over three. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in five and then my pi divided by three. I've got all that there. Boom. And check that out. That also is returning a value of y equals 0.5. So I came up with two values that work. So what that's telling me is all this algebra stuff I did, I did that correctly. So that's one of the habits I want you guys to get into. Always double check your work 
graphically when you can because you can do it algebraically you're pretty solid with this stuff but sometimes people make mistakes and that calculator you can use to verify your solutions so let's go ahead and get out of example one let's check out example number two go ahead and solve this one totally on your own and let's come back and see what you get all right so how did you do with this one hopefully you did not forget to do the plus or minus when you took the square root of both sides and then you're able to simplify square root of 3 over 4 down to square root 3 over 2, which is nice because that's on the unit circle. Now check it out. So I've got to know where that's going to be on the unit circle. And again, there's going to be four spots this time because cosine is going to be positive here in quadrant 1 and quadrant number 4. And those are going to be the two values when I have those two pieces. I'm going to have pi over 6 this is going to be up here, but down here, I'm going to have 11 pi's over 6. Ooh. But then over here in quadrant number 2, I'm going to have negative root 3 over 2 for cosine. So my cosine is negative root 3 over 2 when I'm at 5 pi's over 6. And it's going to be negative also when I'm at 7 pi's over 6. So those are the four values around the unit circle that return a value of either positive root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. And usually, most textbooks, you'll see them written in order. Algebraically, we came up with four answers. So now we're going to check this using our TI graphing calculator. So go ahead and put 4 cos squared theta minus 3 in Y1. And now let's use that value feature to go ahead and check our solutions again. This time, we want to see if when we type in that value, if, we, if it returns a value of 0. All right, now just double check to make sure that you got that plugged into your calculator correctly. 4 cos x and the squared the way that ti handles that because it won't write it right after the word cosine and for the variable or the angle piece so just make sure that it goes in like that now we go ahead and hit graph let's check it out so it looks like we've got one two three four different zeros now what are the values of those zeros now again when you're using the uh, your graphing calculator you could just do second trace and you could use the zero feature but I don't know what pi over six is as a decimal and that's all that calculator is going to kick out if you use the zero feature so that's why I like this value feature so when I go ahead and use value it's going to be a lot nicer so if I type in pi divided by six notice what happens as a decimal pi divided by 6 is about 0.524 but I'm more concerned with the y value over here that returns a value of 0 and look we can see where the cursor is blinking on my x-axis that confirms that so that's one of my values and I would just test out the other ones make sure I didn't make any careless mistakes so I would do um, try that value feature again and this time say maybe I do 7 pi over 6 so after I type in 7 pi over 6 I could check that out boom there's my third one right there so I would check each one of my solutions and make sure that the value that I come up with actually is a zero which is confirmed because we see y equals zero right here on the calculator so that's pretty cool it's one way that we can use our graphing calculator to help us verify and solve all this stuff not too shabby thank you TI now let's go ahead and take a look at one more example oh man this one has cosecant in it yuck but solving this is going to be pretty straightforward now when you add three to both sides no big deal that will give us just a value of five on the right hand side dividing gives us a value of one now i'm going to use a trig reciprocal property here and i'm going to take cosecant i'm going to change that to be one over sine and i'm going to actually just flip both sides booyah when I flip one over sine, that gives me sine. Hello, how you doing, sine? Now, when I flip one, you got to be careful because that same thing as one over one. When you flip one over one, you take that reciprocal, you still get one. Now, again, I'm thinking on my unit circle, right? Where is the sine one? Okay, well, that's right up there at the coordinates, zero, one. Well, what are my radians at that spot? Ooh, you know that. That is pi over two. So I get that value of pi over 2. So that's my solution to this problem here. Now if I want to verify this thing on the graphing calculator, what? How can I do that? If there's no cosecant button? Ha! You're in luck because I'm going to show you how to do that. Now I'm going to type the 5 like I normally would, but the reciprocal function of cosecant is sine. So what I have to do next 
is make sure I hit my parentheses, then type uh, 1 divided by and then sine. Make sure you have two parentheses right there. So 1 divided by sine x, and then we have our minus. And see how that's like off the screen now? So when you hit return, you're going to see this little triangle thing over there. That just means there's more stuff out on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and verify this again. So we'll graph this, check it out. Oh, look, there's one thing. So I'm going to check out my value here. So the value I came up with was, so again, I type in my pi and then divide it by 2. And now notice right here, I have y equals 2 right here. Now what did I want my solution to be? I wanted this to have to equal to, so 5 cosecant of theta minus 3. I wanted that to return a value of 2, and it did when our angle was equal to pi over 2. So that's it on this video. All you have to do is take your time, solve the equation, use values from the unit circle, and then verify it using your handy dandy TI8384 graphing calculator. So that's it for, for this video. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Peace out.